In our day and age, it seems like robots can do almost anything. They can cook for us, entertain senior citizens and build our cars. How well this all works in practice and how helpful robots truly are, that's our topic on Shift today. Robots are increasingly being integrated into the hospitality industry and for good reason. In Berlin alone, 10,000 fewer people are working in hotels and restaurants than before the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a problem the sector is facing globally. People all around the world have left the food service industry and in some cases, robots are now working in their stead. In this bar in Munich, a robot mixes the cocktails. Like many bars, the team here is short-staffed and making mojitos can be time-consuming. Robot Sam supports the team. We keep the same amount of people on staff as before, meaning we're not planning to replace anybody with the robot. It's just here to support us. Human bartenders can get tired out from certain tasks, but the robot can go on and on, like squeezing limes, for example. I like the robot quite a lot. He can't talk back or complain. No, but seriously, it takes a lot off our hands. Robots are becoming more technologically advanced and sophisticated in their motor skills. The COVID-19 pandemic has ramped up interest in this type of technology, due in part to staff shortages and a desire for contactless food preparation. They're also used for service. Some move autonomously, while others assist waitstaff with carrying dishes. Still, robotics expert Henny Benamore is skeptical of their practicality. I'm not convinced that they actually um, are really helpful because oftentimes they are slower than a human. Um, of course, these kind of environments are also sort of messy environments. You have to clean up and so on. And that's not always amenable or the right kind of environment for a robot that requires, you know, cleanliness in order to work um, uh, efficiently. So personally, I would also say that's mostly a gimmick today, but that may change in the future. So there's still a ways to go. Humanoid robots in particular remain a daunting task for developers, like Optimus, a robot developed by car manufacturer Tesla. At a recent presentation, it still seemed pretty clunky. But Tesla CEO Elon Musk is convinced that Optimus will support or even replace industrial workers in a few years. And he wants to produce millions of them. I, for one, am very curious to see how that plays out. The robots developed by Boston Dynamics seem far more agile and refined. The company was acquired by Hyundai. That's no surprise, given that the automotive industry is one of the most automated sectors. Robots have long been used in the automotive industry, and they're ideal for mass production. Once programmed, they can work on specific tasks almost entirely without breaks and without human assistance. Currently, collaborative robots, also known as cobots, are supposed to assist and support human employees. But it's not always that straightforward. So when the robot needs to interact and coexist with humans, then things become tricky because it's not easily foreseeable what humans will be doing, how they will behave, um, what new things they may be uh, coming up with, etc. So dealing with humans is one of the challenges here, but also dealing with tasks that change and evolve. Car manufacturer Ford is experimenting with direct collaboration between humans and robots. Here, the cobot can take on some of the more physically strenuous parts of the job, working in tandem with human employees. Still, cobots aren't all too common yet. Even though cobots are being adopted in the automotive uh, industry, it's only about 5%. And even then, they're actually focused on very limited tasks that involve rather limited interaction and collaboration with the human partner. So that may involve something like a handoff of an object to a human par partner, or it may involve collaboratively lifting an object, um, a heavy object. So it's still a very narrow task. The startup Neure Robotics is working on expanding the functionality of cobots by equipping them with cognitive skills. 
More complex sensors allow the robots to have a better perception of their environment and differentiate between humans and objects. Through machine learning, the robots are expected to learn new tasks much faster without having to be reprogrammed. Robots have only ever performed supporting tasks, like grabbing an object and placing it somewhere. But cognitive robots, with their ability to understand their environment and react to it, suddenly become skilled workers. There's no question, robots are incredibly useful when it comes to industrial work. With advancing artificial intelligence and increasingly refined motor skills, they will be able to take on even more tasks. But do we really want robots to be working in all sectors? For example, would you want a robot to help take care of your grandmother? I love exercising. Come and join me if you like. Time to get moving in this German nursing home. Peppa the robot is there to help guide the residents. The robot is also programmed to tell fairy tales and play games. A welcome change of pace for both the residents as well as for the caregivers. I like working with Pepper. Hey, I'm ticklish. <laughs> and as you can see, the residents are also delighted. Pepper's here to entertain the residents. Ideally, the robot should free up the caregivers, allowing them more time for individual care. But so far, the staff is needed to supervise. Social robots like Pepper should not be expected to do what humans can do says robotics ethicist Amy van Weinsberg. Humans have the tendency to overtrust the technology and to project. Yeah, they want the robot to be its friend, so they believe in their mind that it is a friend. And I think, especially when we're talking about people who are older and lonely in the home, we need to find more creative solutions so that they can have companionship, not a technology that it could exploit their tendencies and their vulnerabilities. Lovat the robot is geared specifically toward eliciting happy emotions. Cuddly and soft, with big eyes and a warm body temperature, this robot's ability to help patients with dementia is being tested in Denmark. People suffering from dementia tend to get lonely and become closed off from their surroundings. That's why it's important to have a high quality of life as you get older. The first results from the study on Lovat showed there were some positive effects, like making people smile. But researchers also found there were no significant improvements overall on the social well-being of patients. So as much as we might want to say it's cute and it's cuddly and it has a certain temperature so I can hug it, yes, but this is not your dog. This is a product that has been designed to want you to hug it so that it can record your heart rate, so that it can get more data out of you and provide benefit, economic benefit for the company. Amy van Weinsberg is opposed to increasingly humanoid care robots. Instead, they should resemble precisely what they are, machines. In the robotics industry, many beg to differ, as the android Sophia shows. Social robots like me can help take care of the sick or elderly in many kinds of healthcare and medical uses. I can help communicate, give therapy, and provide social stimulation, even in difficult situations. I'll be honest with you, I very much hope that Sophia will never be my caregiver. I think using robots to replace human interactions is problematic. Amy van Weinsberg has a different approach when it comes to how robot technology should be used. We've seen throughout the pandemic that we are not taking good care of our caregivers. And if robots can help us take care of our caregivers, then we have a really fantastic shot at using a technology for good. One specific example, so-called robotic exoskeletons, which help caregivers lift and carry. Robots can also run errands within care homes, but also out and about. We had a look at how well this works in action. This delivery robot struggles at first, but soon manages to get back on track. Starship Technologies is one of the many companies integrating robots into their business model. The robots deliver packages and groceries right to users' doorsteps in Estonia's capital Tallinn. Kirill Solovyov is testing it out today. The search didn't work as well as I was hoping, but otherwise I got what I, what I was hoping to get and then placing and confirming the order was completely 
smooth as well. With the app, customers can place orders, track the delivery, and finally unlock the lid to retrieve their goods. In Tallinn, each delivery costs one euro. You're fully in control of the timing, much more so than with a human courier, so you can have a time into your arrival. If you don't want to interact with a human for COVID-related reasons, for example, the robot can actually make you feel more safe. The robots drive autonomously, using a mix of computer vision and GPS to arrive at their destination. In order to avoid obstacles along the way, they're equipped with 12 cameras, ultrasound sensors, radars, and neural networks. They move at six kilometers per hour, a brisk pace for a pedestrian, but there are a few other limitations. First of all, volume of delivery is limited, then the range from the store is limited too. And third, it cannot go up the stairs, especially for people with mobility issues, that's a problem. They have to go down and pick it up and haul it back up themselves. So it's still going to take some time before robots will manage climbing the stairs to your apartment door. For people like me who live on the fifth floor, there's definitely room for improvement. But the developers are working on it. In Tallinn, these driverless delivery robots from Cleven have recently started operating in normal traffic at speeds of up to 25 kilometers per hour. However, there are still humans in the background checking that everything runs smoothly. Robots and humans working as a team, robotics expert Haini Binamor believes that is the way to go. Personally, I think the best way of leveraging robotics technology is to have them interact and combine their abilities together with humans such that it's a synergistic combination. So if we combine the flexibility and adaptation abilities of a human and the abilities of manipulating and dealing with heavy objects, repetitive motions, doing something again and again from the robot, then I think we get the best of both worlds and we get something that enriches our human society. Do robots improve our lives and could you imagine working side by side with one? Personally, I wouldn't mind having a robot co-host. What's your take? Let us know. Bye-bye.